Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to Viewers Anonymous. Welcome to another episode of Viewers Anonymous. I am the, well, what is it, co-host? Is that what it is? I'm the co-host, Steve <laughs> Bronson. <laughs> <laughs> and I am S. Foster. Well, I'm one of the hosts. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Welcome back for another episode, man. You know what I'm saying? Where we give reviews on some of the hottest TV shows and movies out. Uh, What's going on with you, man? Man, I can't call it, man, other than being in traffic. Uh, like crazy today. Um, you know, I guess my message didn't go out to the world. Where I said people need to stop moving here. Um, but I also didn't say if y'all did move here. Um, I hope that y'all having a bad experience and move back to where you came from because it's traffic, <laughs> man. This is it's insane, man. Like I am, I am sick of this shit. But um, yeah. but other than that, man, I'm doing all right, man. How about yourself? Man, I'm great, bro. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just living life, man. Like I was telling you offline. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to get back in the golf and, you know what I'm saying, talking to my brother, man, and, you know what I'm saying, I'm about to get some stuff going, doing some, you know what I'm saying, some grown man things, man, you know. He uh he went to Tennessee for his uh, wedding anniversary, so he real big on whiskey right now. I've been trying to get him on whiskey for, like, the last seven months. So he go to Tennessee, all of a sudden he wants some whiskey now. So I finally locked him in. And we gonna, uh, you know what I'm saying, get some whiskey and, and sit back, smoke a couple cigars this weekend, chill out. Probably uh, hit a couple golf balls into the net. You know, just chill out, do some grown man stuff, man. That's what's up, man. That sounds like a good fucking weekend to me. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Man, I can't wait for it. I'm super excited. Um, But, man, outside of that, man, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I meant to tell you, man, I went to the drive-in. Uh, I seen Jurassic World. You did what? Um, what's that movie? The new Jurassic Park. Whatever it's called. Jurassic Dominion. Whatever that shit called. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Movie. I want to see that. Yeah, man. It's, it's uh, I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I didn't watch it, though. <laughs> man, come on, man. I swear I didn't, man. It, it's not my fault. I was working in the midst of it all. Well... I am definitely gonna watch it, man. Um, when it comes to the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, which they combined the shit this time, um, I think that's dope, man. That they was able to to bring that old crew in from from mm-hmm. Jurassic Park to Jurassic World, and that's just one of those things where it's like you know you've seen like the first four or five installments, you might as well watch it. You know what I mean? If you've yeah. been if you've been invested that long, you might as well go ahead and watch the new one. So. At some point, I'm going to get to it and uh, watch it myself. I did get to see something which I was going to speak about and uh, what we're watching. I okay. finally was able to see a new joint that, uh, that I've been waiting on for a minute. So uh, so I actually seen something something new, too, man, that I've been wanting to get into. That's what's up. Well, let's get into it, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's get into this, what we're watching, man. Um, like I said, i seen Jurassic, whatever it's called, Dominion or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? It was pretty good. Um, but I seen something on Netflix that, you know what I'm saying, I am super, super hyped about. I'm only like four episodes in. I think it's like six of them all together. And you know I'm a sucker for Doc, right? So oh, yeah. they have this uh they have this show called A Web of Make Believe. And it's it's different stories about like all of these um criminal um, situations that happened on the internet, like through the internet and stuff. And the first one is the one that got me hooked. It's uh, it's about this dude who um, started this thing called swatting. So he would be like playing video games with somebody, and you know how like the kids on the video game, if you beat them, they, they get mad, they just throw out the n word on you. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, this one dude, you know what I'm saying, instead of doing that, what he did was he basically hacked your IP, got your address, and would send the police to your house. What? <laughs> yeah. So they he would send the police to your house, and, like, he'd be acting like, 
you know what I'm saying, like, he might be like, uh, you know what I'm saying, he'll act like somebody trapped at your house or something. He'd be like, yeah, this guy has a gun. He had me kidnapped in his house. Da, da, da. Or like the police will come in, like bust down your door, all kind of shit, man. And um, you know what I'm saying, just, just invade your privacy. And so basically, as he was doing this, he was online, like, and he was getting famous for it. So he was bragging on Twitter and all this other stuff, talking about how he was doing this. So one time he did it. This dude was like, uh, yeah, he was like, you probably going to do, he was like, you probably going to do nothing but swap me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, talking trash to him on Twitter. So he was like, oh, you think, you know, you think shit's sweet? He was like, yeah, he was like, I send you my address. I ain't scared of you. So he was like, well, send it. So he sends him, a, he sends him the address. The dude swats the, the address and the, um, it's the wrong, he sends him the wrong address. So it's a dude, he's coming outside. The police are surrounding the house and they shoot the dude and kill him. And now, yeah, like, too. yeah, they find the dude who was doing the swatting and all that type of stuff, and he ended up getting life. And then the other, the other dude that was um, on the other side, he ended up doing like a couple of years or whatever. But it's, it's, it was, it's crazy. And that's just the first episode. The second one is about like this chick. She like scamming people out of, um, out of their money through dating, like how the Tinder Slender was. Uh huh. Yeah, but she's not doing it like that. Like she literally like drugging these dudes right before they had sex and then stealing their money and leaving them in the hotel. <laughs> yeah. It's not funny. It's definitely not funny. I'm not laughing. It's just like, it's, it's just the, the stuff that people are doing is crazy, bro. But yeah, y'all yeah. go check it out, man. It's called A Web of Make Believe. It's on Netflix. It's, I think it's uh, six episodes. I'm only four in, but it's, it's worth the watch. It's some wild stuff people end up getting into. Yeah, that definitely sounds crazy, man. So, so I got two this week, man. Um, okay. The first one would be uh something that they've been promoting for a while, man. I was very interested and been, you know, highly anticipated. You know what I'm saying? The Martin uh, reunion, man. Oh yeah. Uh, My yeah, saying, man. man. I watched that, man. What a, what a great man, Martin, Tisha Campbell, <laughs> um, Pacino. uh. Yeah, and, and, and Cole, not Cole, but Carl Anthony on the third. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Express a tribute to Tommy, man. Rest in peace to him, man. It was great. I learned a lot. It was great seeing all those clips. And the one crazy thing about Martin was Martin was never that show where I, like, sat down and, like, watched it live. Mm-hmm. But, like, it came on so much and the reruns go so much, so much that I've seen all episodes. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah, sure. I don't never remember watching them back to back to back to back, but you know, the every clip they showed, I seen it. And it's just like, yo, mm-hmm. I really believe I saw every single one. And then you learn some new stuff, like where they improv stuff and and all that type shit, man. Like there was some stories that was told that was great. I love the tribute that they did to Tommy. A lot of people yeah. came back. So that was really dope, man. Y'all can find that on BET <clears> plus. <throat> You know what I'm saying? The uh the Martin reunion. And I think he gave a great answer um when they asked, could they redo it? Now, first of all, let me say my opinion. If something as great as Martin, there's no need to bring it back. You can rewatch right. those episodes until the end of time and you're good. You don't sure. need any new material because the old material is so fucking funny that you mm-hmm. don't need new material. Mm-hmm. But the answer he gave was first he said never say never, but at the same time he said I do not believe that we will be bringing it back because it wouldn't be right to do it without Tommy because Tommy was such yeah. a huge part of the show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you can't GTD, do it without man. GTD. Yeah, man. Like so, it's 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 too much of a monumental show, and mm-hmm. it was it was great to watch that reunion, man. Um, to see all of them back together. Telling the old stories, man. Bro, man came back. You know, um, it 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 was just great, man. Uh, so everybody should check that out on B two plus. The other thing that I watched, um, it it came out on um Disney plus after you know it did its run in the movies, man. But I finally seen Doctor uh, Strange, yeah. man. Uh, me uh, too, brother. Doctor Strange. Uh, what was it? Uh, the Multiverse of Madness. Madness. Man, oh, yo, it was good. It was great. It was good, man. It was good. Uh, I, I was, I, de- I definitely wasn't disappointed 
you know, I, I like their view on, mm-hmm. you know, the multi universes and shit like that. Yeah. Um, you know, to to have somebody as powerful as they was, man, to be the villain. You know what I'm saying? When it came to Wanda, I think she did mm-hmm. a really good job, man. She was cold, man. How she did, yeah. how she did, my man. Uh, and she was like, "Yo, she was like, do, do your kids got their mother?" And then oh, was like, man. yeah, she's like, good. yeah, she was like, well, at least crazy. they got somebody to take care of them. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, yo, but hey, Wanda was cold in here, but yeah, she buddy. was cold. Yeah, buddy. so uh, yeah, man, that Doctor Strange, man, it, it was good, man. It was it was it was mm-hmm. good. So I, I I definitely wasn't mad at it. So um the Martin reunion on uh B E T plus and I watched um on Disney Plus the uh Doctor Strange movie, man. So That's what's up, man. Yeah, man, been taking in some new material. Watch some other shit too, but you know what I'm saying? I ain't I ain't wanna take up the whole segment. Yeah, I know you good, man. You good, man. Um so let's get into it, man. You know what I'm saying? This is a, a appreciation episode. And if you have been listening to us um, from the jump, you already know, man, that we so love and give flowers to um, some of the best that have done it in Hollywood. And today we are showing love to none other than a, a New York legend, you know what I'm saying, a film legend, um, one of Black Hollywood's legends, of course, an icon, man, Omar. I'm sorry, I keep saying Omar Epps. Why? You know what <laughs> Wood Harris, man. Yeah, man, Sherwin David, you know what I'm saying, Wood Harris, you know what I'm saying, um, born October the 17th, man, 1969, you know, everybody know him from, I think his biggest break was, uh, you know, on the wire, where he played yeah. Avon um, Barksdale, you know what I'm saying, that's what everybody know him from, but, you know, you got Remember the Titans, you got As of Late, Winning Time, you know what I'm saying, he was in Creed yep. 2, Space Jam. You know what I'm saying? Um, obviously, paid in full. Paid in full. Yep. So, but the thing is, man, he's been in so much stuff, man. The new edition story, you know what I'm saying? The breaks. Like, he's been doing a lot, a lot of work, man. I think mm-hmm. that this is, oh, and then we can't forget about Next Day Air. Like, oh, this dude Air was great. He is, he is like one of those legends where, like, we were speaking about on coming, to, on coming soon, is that a lot of, it really depends on like your background, like the way you would view somebody like Wood Harris. Like his talent is undeniable, but I feel like when it comes to people that watch some of the movies that we watch, like he means more. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? This is a real podcast. He means more to the black community. Like, like the way we view somebody like Wood Harris, like we view him, you know what I'm saying? Like, Okay, I got a good comparison for you. The way that most of America will look at somebody like Brad Pitt or something like that, like that's the way we like look at Wood Harris. Like, yeah, sure. he's like a he's like a legend. Uh, the movies that we've seen and the shows that we've seen him in, like yeah. we look at this dude like a legend. I mean, like, man, come on, man, for his first movie, like movie, mm-hmm. to be above the rim. And how he yeah. stood out on the screen, and this dude got a whole meme. Anytime yeah. somebody get done up on the court, everybody showed that picture when he was pulling out a gun after they lost the shootout game. No, he got a. He actually has a couple memes though. Like that's the that's the crazy part. Like he got the one from Paid in Full where he where he's sitting on the little lounge chair and he all uh, bandaged up. Yeah, they had a meme talking about uh, when you. <laughs> what do you say when you when you tell your girl how you gonna beat it up when you get home and she can wait all day? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, listen. no, no. I actually I actually posted a meme of him uh, like yeah. last month. Actually, uh, it was the yeah. one when you know what I'm saying when money making Mitch pulled up and the mm-hmm. big smile on his face, and they was mm-hmm. like, "Yo, if your friends don't be this happy for you when you win it, <laughs> then you need to you need to drop them." And for it's sure. like. Cause like man, his his smile was so genuine, like he was so happy for Mitch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah, so you're right. He do got a couple of memes, man. Uh, I yeah. seen one when he was in Remember the Titans as well. I can't remember what the meme said, but but yeah, man, Wood Harris, man. For us, like we view this dude and the stuff that we seen him in, man. When it comes to the wire, I mean, he was in mm-hmm. Oz. 
Like yep. he's done like a lot of like great TV shows. Man, I forgot. I for, you just brought it up, but I forgot he was going to be tight. Man, how could you, man? You know what? I'm about to take you off the screen, but I'm sorry, man. Listen, remember the Titans is one of those movies that it was so good that you forget like all of the people that's actually in that movie. You know what I'm saying? Like it's one of those movies that like the the some of the actors that was in that movie was like they went on to do some like amazing films. Dude, I actually got a story about Remember the Titan. So talk to me. All right, so for the people, you know, we might have some new listeners that might not know this. So, you know what I'm saying? Play high school ball, all that type shit. So my senior year. Nah, we, man, don't uh, do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> so um so You're we the champion. We, I, yeah. Uh so we made it to the state championship and like that week, like every day we had they had an you know an event for us to do. Like we went to this place called Gaddy Town. Um, yeah. we went, um, shit, I don't know, forgot everything we did, but one of the days we went to the movies. Now, mm-hmm. this movie came out in 2000, yeah. but this was 2003, so I don't know if they like paid the movie theater to do it or it, yeah, if it was one of those dollar movies. Hyped up. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but so we watched Remember the Titans. Oh, yeah, like you know, what I'm saying one of the one of those days, uh, because like we had. Uh, I think we had a week off mm-hmm. for the state championship. So, like, that's why they did all that shit for us that, that week. So, we go to the movies to go watch Remember the Titans, even though it was mm-hmm. released three years before. So, uh, so that was one fun thing that we was able to do, man. And Remember the Titans, man. It's just one of those movies where – and this is the thing. This is something that I noticed when I was watching it. Yeah. It's on Disney Plus because it's a mm-hmm. Walt Disney film. And I think – the way that they did it, they kind of sugarcoated it a little bit because they also did it with Glory Road as well. Like, I don't mm-hmm. think we really see the the real significance of how bad like they had to go through, you know what I'm saying, integrating the school and then putting a the black guy as the head coach of this new school. Oh, listen, when he talked in that banana, <laughs> that, was <laughs> a, that was just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, like it's it, it, and then for the whole thing of like, you know, he lose one game, he out, and this motherfucker go undefeated. Like, <laughs> like how much, how much of a spit in the face that is to the to the committee? That's like, oh, like, hey, he lose the game, he's out of here, guys, guys, we good. We gonna we gonna fire him after he lose this game, we good. And this dude go undefeated <laughs> and win the state championship. I bet today was like, man, this is some bull, but. You know, uh, Wood played Julius, man. He played a defensive end. You know what I'm saying? That um, that was best friends with Gary Bertier. Um, yeah, left side, you know, strong side. Yes, sir, man. Like, I love that movie, man. The crazy part was I watched it last night, and my old lady came up, and she was like, are you watching this for the podcast, or are you just watching it? I was like, oh, I'm just watching it. And then she was like, this is a great movie. I was like, what? You like this movie? And it was just so funny, but like it's just one of those movies that's just really, really, really good, man. And it's mm-hmm. and I think that anytime now, like Walt Disney, they Walt Disney the, the racism, but oh, cool. you know they still gave you those with, parts of where with they you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but then like I mean, you, you still gotta understand how stupid you look standing outside of school. With signs that say "Stop busing" and all this type of shit, just because he, uh, <laughs> black kids are gonna go to school, with white kids they gonna sit there and stand out there and protest. So, um, hey man, listen, I ain't gonna lie to you. Them, them the type of problems that I wish to have someday. Don't yeah. send these guys to our school. They type of stuff. Yeah, that's them easy problems. Yeah, like. But uh, but yeah, man. But as far as Wood though, man, he I think that's probably like really the film that kind of. I mean, he was already good. I mean, you know, with with him being from, you know, Chicago, Illinois, and all, and then end yeah, up right. going in New York. I with Omar well, he went to, he went to school. Well, first he attended um, uh, Northern Illinois, a school of arts. And then he got his bachelor's there, and then he went to New York University uh, 
and oh, wow. got his uh got his masters there. Okay. So I mean, he ended up going to New York anyway. Um, yeah, but it, I was only saying he's from New York because <laughs> I can't think. He thought Omar he was from New York. <laughs> yeah, nah, you man. know, Omar Epps actually from New York. Yeah, he's actually from New York. But the thing is, yeah. like when you think about Wood Harris, though, look how many characters he played that are from like New York. You know what I'm saying? He played Ace. He's so cool. You know what I'm saying when he was in um when he was in um what's our movie uh shit I just said it, above the rim yeah you know what I'm saying above the rim he was a New Yorker in that yep um he was a New Yorker in um let me see the wire was in New York no that was next day me. next day air next day oh, air York. was in New York yep. So he's played like a lot of like films where he was, you know what I'm saying, in New York. Dude, he was in um well he was only in one episode, so there ain't really no reason to be- and he was only in one episode of Oz too. But um but yeah, man, above the rim, for that to be your for that to be his first film and mm-hmm. for him to stand out, you know what I'm saying, with a movie with Dwayne Martin, Leon, Tupac, yeah. you know what I'm saying, Marlon Wayans, like there's some heavy hitters in there. Yeah. And Wood, he held his own, man, in his first movie. And I just I just really don't think that people really understand, like, for him to be around the people that he was. Like, I remember listening to an interview when he was talking about, like, just the aura of just being around somebody like Tupac. Being around mm-hmm. Tupac in 19, you know, they probably filmed this in 1993, Came right. out 1994, but just being around somebody, and then you got to think. He even said this: he's coming off of juice. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So Pop went to a whole different. Because see, this is the thing: like Pop coming off of juice in '92, and also Tupac the list Is that it? Tupac, Tupac, uh, Tupac lips. Yeah, that coming out the same year or right after that. Like this dude completely took off and he was just saying like just being around that dude around that time was just which is crazy man and um Mm -hmm. but that that is a that is a great start to your career man to to have a movie a movie like above the rim which we did above the rim that was uh one of the episodes that we had we had our boy jd oracle on with us um when we did above the rim on this podcast so uh but yeah, man, Will Harris, man, the brother of Steve Harris, you know what I'm saying? You know, they done worked together a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everybody always knows Steve Harris of being a bad husband in um what's that Tyler Perry movie? Uh oh um, um Why did I damn. get married? No, not why did I get married. Um the one where Shamar Shamar Moore had them bad No, that was to pot to Haji P uh Pensa. Um, Diary of a Mad Black movie? Woman. The bald head dude. Yeah, yeah. The, the Diary of a Mad Black Woman. It was yeah. that one. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? When he, when he, you know I didn't know that was real. Yeah, I, I didn't know till later on. Uh, till I, no, I, I found I'm out. I'm talking about this. Like, I just learned that. I didn't know they were brothers. What? Yeah, I really had no idea, bro. Yeah, man. Oh, the bald headed dude from, from that. That's what he's mostly known for now. Don't get me wrong. His brother got a good career too. He's been doing a lot of things. No, but... Steve. You said his name was Steve Harris. Yeah, Steve Harris. He's he's my favorite bad guy in every movie. So he, yeah, he's all. He's, he always playing like a diabolical role. Yeah, he's all. He's always a bad guy, man. He either a bad cop. He either like a. Uh, he either a, uh, a bad boss. Is whatever he do, man. It's always some type of scandal involved. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he definitely, he's definitely good about being a bad guy in the film, man. He's mm-hmm. definitely that, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, man, that's that's his brother. Now they don't, they don't look like. Um, Not a little bit, they do. They do a little bit, but they, but you know yeah. what I'm saying. But Wood, you know what I'm saying. He's like the the thin, tall brother, and he's like yeah. the short, stocky one. But <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, they uh, they brothers, man. I thought you knew that. Man, I, I'm telling you that when you just said that, I, I just learned that. That's crazy. 
But see, That's the, funny. the thing, the thing though, man, about Will Harris though, like he got that iconic, like you know how all those, you know, so like all the good actors, they always got that one thing about them that everybody knows. Like yeah. that squint that he has, I don't know if like that's just because like his eyes are like that naturally or or what, but like he you know, he do that squint when he talking and stuff, when he get real serious doing like a one of those, you know what I'm saying, like talking directly to you, like assertive. When he do that squint, bro, he be getting busy, man. Yeah, yeah, he did he did that a few times in um and uh and remember the Titans. He did that a few times. He did that a few times in there, man. But like, yeah, you're right, man. He definitely gets he gets into his bag, man. When, yeah. and when he make when he make that face, so that is uh that is definitely something that he got. And then like he got this thing where he kind of like kind of like one eye kind of like shuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, he just got. I think I think that's just like a little tick that he got. But like, but 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 when he do it though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, he in his bag when he do it. So that that is one funny thing. That is hilarious that you say that. Yeah, man. That but like, a... um, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, I think that his 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 probably most famous role is paid in full. You know what I'm saying? He was the the main character. I mean, I know they all all three of them was the focal point of the movie, but to me, he was the main character of the movie. The you know what I'm saying? He kind of narrated the story in a sense. Um, the story kind of followed him, but I think that his acting in that movie, it was one of those things to where he didn't have to do a lot, but when you know what I'm saying, when he did it, it stood out amongst everybody else. Cause like, don't get me wrong, bro. Like, Cameron, you know what I'm saying? He cool. That's his first role, so you kind of get him some leeway. But like mm -hmm. Makai Pfeiffer, bro, you know Makai Pfeiffer is the man. So oh, yeah. to stand next to Makai Pfeiffer and be able to steal the scene, like even though like Makai Pfeiffer, Makai Pfeiffer, Makai Pfeiffer put on a clinic when they were sitting in the car and he was, you know, what I'm saying talking about how he's sick of everybody else and they he just start crying. Like to me, that's like a one acting. But you know, what I'm saying when you watch Wood Harris throughout the movie, like for him, you know, what I'm saying to play such a cool, laid back character. Like you can tell, like he really put some effort in that because it's hard to do that. Like to 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 do it and make it believable on screen. A lot of people don't understand how difficult that is to, you know, what I'm saying, be as um, be as believable and you know, what I'm saying, be as impressionable uh, as they were on screen and, and really did like a great job of that. Man, you definitely right, man. That that's that's one of those movies. Hood classic, and that scene that you're talking about, man, that scene, which we'll get into, you know, um, at a later date. But, but he was just like, he said, anybody, he's like, anybody owes me money, it's fucking dead. <laughs> just like, and like, man, like, hey, Makai killed that part. He killed that part. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, it would, man. He got a, he does a really good job of playing like laid back characters. I felt like, yeah, I felt like when he played Ace, like, like I feel like that's what Wood Harris is like, like period. Like I feel like yeah. I feel like his demeanor mm -hmm. when he played yeah. Ace is like something that's more similar to what type of person that he is. It just seemed natural. Yeah, like like he wasn't really active. It was just kind of like, yo, I'm just reading, not not even necessarily reading lines, you know what I'm saying, just spitting lines. And like that, that that's one of the one of those ones, man. Like, paid in full is, well, I'm not gonna get too deep into it for other reasons, but yeah, yeah. That, that's definitely that's definitely one of those films, man. That he uh, that he really killed, and then also. When you look at something like Next Day Air, he's actually a producer oh, of that. Man. Really? Yeah, yeah, he's one of the okay. producers on Next Day Air, and like, I mean, even 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 that cast, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he reconnected with Petey, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, man, you got Omar Hardwick in that joint. Omar Hardwick, Donald Faison. Yeah. Um, I forgot what the what the Spanish lady name was, but you know what I'm saying? She be doing she was in a couple movies that year and a couple years after. Um it's a it's a bunch of people in that joint. Mike Epps is in there. Yep. 
uh, Darius McCray, he's in there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Next day air, man. And then, like, the thing about next day air is, like, everybody <laughs> always think, like, that's what drivers do. Like, they gave us, like, a bad look, man, because they, like, that well, everybody be thinking. Kind of shit them, he was still not kind of shit. And people be thinking. Shout out to from Donald Faye, man. Yeah, man. Yassin Yassiel Bay. Like, everybody think that we just be going back there stealing shit out of the box. It's like, nah, y'all. We definitely don't be doing none of that shit because they <laughs> would. It, 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 I don't know why people think that, yo, like, people be wilding, yo. I remember one day I'm delivering a package, yo, and, like, I backed the truck up to, like, yeah. the guy's driveway. And so the guy come out of the house. Well, he opens up the driveway and come out the house. And so I lift up my back door so he can see I'm in my truck still. So he had tires. And I hate it when this happened. Only three. I only had three. You know what I'm saying? So that happens sometimes because, see, this is what they do. When they come to y'all packages, right, if you ever, you know, knew you had, like, three packages coming from the same order and, you know, you go on your porch, you only see two. So basically what happens is when they load up these trailers, like they just shit just come down the conveyor belt. You fill up the trailer till it gets full. They shut it. Then start the new one. So sometimes packages get split up. So that also happened with tires too. So to get back to the story. So I roll up my door. He rolls up his driveway and I only got three tires. I roll them all off. And the guy's like, what's my fourth tire? I'm like, you know, Tire got split up. That tends to happen sometimes. And then he's like, what, what am I going to do with three tires? I'm like, dude, look at my truck. Wherever you need clothes. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's not another fucking tire on here. He actually, I was like, you can come in here and look if you want. He actually came in there and looked. And I'm like, are you serious? What am I going to do with one fucking tire? I'm going to steal you know one of your tires. tires? Going for, you know how much tires are going for on the market right now, man? And I'm like, yo, boy, people, I'm, yo, people, wow. But, like, yeah, we definitely don't be stealing no packages. I think what people don't tend to understand is, like, that package, because this is the thing, you can track your shit. So, you know, every time your package hit another destination because it's scanned. And it's like, as many times as it's scanned, if you try to steal some shit, like, they know it's you. Sure. All that Dude. shit is what ID. It's ID to your um. It's all ID to your truck. You know what I'm saying? You yo your, your number on there and everything, ain't it? That's what I'm saying. And then, yeah. dude, we used to uh. So I don't know how big it is, like if it's up there, but uh, y'all had Radio Shacks, right? Okay, so obviously everybody yeah. knows Radio Shacks is done deal. <laughs> so, but a couple years ago. We we um used to do their shipments. Their shipment day used to be Thursday, right? So the Thursday okay. was the day that they got a lot of shit. So this was years ago. Like this had to be at least about ten years ago. So Thursdays would come around, and what ended up happening was the people at Radio Shack was like, "Yo, we our boxes. We're getting the amount of boxes we're supposed to be getting, but mm-hmm. the shipments are short. Like we like let's say you're supposed to get." 10 or such and such. You know, you yeah. open up the box and there's only seven in there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So what ended up happening was, so I'm rolling up to work one day and man, I see sheriff cars all over the place. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, why are these police up here? No, and cool. come to find out, like, it was a, a couple of drivers, you know what I'm saying, getting together with some of the offloaders and they mm-hmm. knew what was in those boxes and they was taking a little bit of shit out Man, they arrested by six, seven, eight people that day. You know, the, the t- same thing. The same thing happened at this. Uh, I used to sell shoes. Like that was my first job was selling shoes. And these dudes, bro, when um when we had closed the store and everything, they came back and they took the delivery truck and ran it into the back of the store, where this like all the stock and inventory is. Mm-hmm. And they got about a good, I want to say probably about a, almost $8,000 worth of merchandise. Ooh. With, but they did it with the delivery truck. That's crazy. Man. It was, it was that, wild, bro. 
We yeah, lost eight thousand dollars worth of merchandise, and they—I don't—I don't think they got caught that year, but they definitely got it off on the streets because the shoes. When the shoes came out, we seen a lot of people with them shoes on, and we was only like <laughs> one of five stores to sell them. I'm like, yeah, I said they definitely out there getting them off. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So I tell you, I tell you another thing I like about wood. Okay. Wood is definitely, I mean, you can see it not only not only in the, the, the roles that he played, but like even when he's in interviews, you can tell he loves sports, you can tell he loves music. And with him loving music and loving sports, to be in movies like not even really movies, but to do shows like The Break, to do the new edition story. Um I mean Nah, that's not that's not that. But you know what I'm saying. He was on above the above the rim, winning time. Those are some um, sports joints that he did. Yeah. He was in the Creed movies. Uh, you know what I'm saying. He did the, the break. You remember the tight? He did the breaks and he did the breaks TV series. Yeah. So like to be able to, you know what I'm saying. He did uh, 28 episodes of Empire. <laughs> So he's a dude who really gets into the stuff that he loves. And that's got to be some of the funnest shit ever, man, to to be a lover of like music, especially like hip hop and being to be involved in shows that's musically based. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that that's got to be a dope ass thing to do. And then he also don't let himself get tight typecast when it comes to, you know, starting out with above the rim. Right. So. He's really like this gangster droid dealer dude in that movie. And then, you know what I'm saying, being ace and paid in full. But not only ace and paid, paid in full, but then being the, the drug dealer that he was in The Wire. Because he right. was, because he wasn't like uh, Idris Alba's character. Like his character is like, yo, like we need to, we need to transition out of the game. Like yeah. he was, he was like, he was Tommy. Like in in uh, power, like tell me, like yo, I'm yeah. a drug dealer. Like that's where I am. I ain't trying to get out the game. And he got another dude trying to tell him, yo, we need to, you know, make our way out of this game. And Avon Barksdale was the one that wanted to stay in the game, but I mm-hmm. like how he didn't let himself get typecast or always playing that, that drug dealer character. He'll sneak into it, but he don't stay into it, which I think is dope. But let me ask you this: I got a statement, and then let me ask you this. So okay. My question is, did you ever get to watch The Wire? And what I was going to say was, I was one of the ones that was late to the party. Because I remember probably like, I don't know, maybe this was like five years ago or so. For some odd reason, The Wire became like this huge topic of discussion. I don't know why. And like everybody was talking about The Wire. And I didn't know why. I was like, why is everybody talking about The Wire all of a sudden? So I fell into the wormhole. Watched all, I think, four seasons, I think. But he was only in the first one because the second one was about the docks and shit. But so I went back and watched The Wire and I was just like, yo, like, I mean, I was like, it's a good show. But Mm -hmm. I think the reason why people sing a lot The Wire is because what people became from the wire, you know, somebody like Michael Man, that, B. Jordan. Listen, I was, I was just about to, when you was done, I was just about to say that because you had mentioned him being on above the rim and him being in, you know what I'm saying, like, excuse me, paid in full with, you know what I'm saying, all those different people and all those uh, different casts. I was about to say the wire, man, like, if you look at the people that came from that, oh my goodness. Yeah, you, you definitely right. So, what, so you watched the wire, so you seen it. No, <laughs> oh. that's the crazy. I've never, I've never seen an episode of that show. But like you said, you know what I'm saying. It it became such a cultural phenomenon that you know what I'm saying. You you would hear so much about it, and people would talk so much about it that it's like, in a way, I know I know enough about it to be able to have conversations about it. But I've never seen it before. Yeah, it's like the wire was. I think it's really just the fact of they put a cast of basically kind of no, I, I don't want to call them nobodies, but to make the point that I'm making, 
not a bunch of huge name actors. And then for a lot of those actors to become like really, really big in the game, they all came from one show. And HBO was 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 good about shit like that. And then when you think about the HBO shows out during those times, I mean, you got The Sopranos, you got The Wire, you got um, Oz. Like HBO was one of those networks that was really before its time, like before streaming services and shit like that. Like, yeah, they got their streaming service now, but HBO was like, put it like this: if you had HBO back in those times, like people rich. like considered you like rich. Yeah, yeah he was rich. <laughs> I got you. Trust me. I already know you was rich. Hey. <laughs> Hey, but if you told people you had HBO back in the day, mm-hmm. everybody mm-hmm. used to be like, "Oh shit, you got HBO!" They used to get all the they used to get all the movies first. They used to get all the best movies. You used to be like, if you, if you had that, like you made it like HBO was from dope. I remember that, like you, if you stayed up late night on certain, uh, like on weekends, they used to have a, a Spawn episode. You, I mean, they used to have a Spawn uh, series. Remember that? Yep. Yeah. And Man. it was like it was a cartoon, but it was like raw. You was like, "Oh, this is a cartoon." I was like, "Oh, this is crazy, dude." I'm gonna tell you what we need to do. We need to go up to a young person, probably like fifteen, about fifteen, twenty years old, or yeah. even twenty five, and ask them, "Do they know what HBO stands for?" <laughs> oh no, you know they don't know that. Yo, that's one they're, of the. They gonna definitely Google it. Yo, that's one of the dopest fucking names, man. The home box office. That yeah. shit is dope. I don't care what nobody and says. And what's, so, and what's so crazy is, like, for what everybody knows HBO to be now, like, that's it, that, that's how, that just shows you how, you know what I'm saying, like, how well that they do, because they've been like that since they started. Literally. Yep. Literally. <clears throat> yeah, man. Yeah, so. like, so they, they always been on top. But I mean to to bring it back to the wire, like no, I haven't watched it. But like I said, you know, it's it was one of those things that you you know what I'm saying like you would hear them say the names like everybody talked about Avon Barsdale. Um everybody talked about um Aegis Elba's character. I forgot what his name was, but they just talked about how super smart he was and how he was, you know what I'm saying, doing all these things and he was basically like you know what I'm saying? In a sense, like, he was like a Frank Lucas type. You know what I'm saying? They talked about, yeah. you know, how Michael B. Jordan's character died in the end. Um, you know what I'm saying? I remember when they when, when Snoop was, uh, Lil Snoop, uh, not Lil Snoop, but Snoop got real big, and she was just popping up in videos here and there. So it's like, you definitely have, like, even if you haven't seen it, like I said, people talk about it enough to where you know enough to be able to be like, okay, I know what they're talking about. Yeah, but his name was his name was Strager Bell. But um but dude, man, you had Dominic West, you had Lance Reddick, you had Sonya Stone, Williams in it. Uh, Michael K. Williams, you had uh Wendell Pierce, he was in it. You know what I'm saying? Seth Gillum, which a lot of people know him from uh from Walking Dead, the dude that played the priest. Yep. Yo, was, he was uh, in- <laughs> was Wendell Pierce a cop? Wendell Pierce was a cop, yeah, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. For sure. And like you had yeah, Mitch and Snoop, you got Frankie Faison. Mm-hmm. He was in that joint, like we mentioned, uh, Michael B. Jordan. You got uh, Jamie Hector. You know, he becoming to be a really good actor. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, what I'm saying Robin Wisdom. He he, you know, ended up being a pretty good actor. So yeah. I was like, it was a lot of pe- just a lot of fucking. You had people Mac, Mac Wilds was in there too, wasn't he? Mac Wilds. Yeah. Well, wait, was Matt Wilde? Yep, Matt Wilde was in there. Yeah. They yeah, had, man. They had some, some stars coming out off that joint, man. Oh, man, definitely, man. And, and I think that's why uh, Hassan Johnson, he was in that joint. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if a lot of people, you might not know what his name is, but y'all seen him in Belly. He was the one dude that got shot up in, uh, in Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? With, that, with the mm-hmm. one scene where... You know, with the shootout at the apartment, yep. and he ended up wrecking the car after he got shot. He's in a lot of these type movies uh, and TV shows. Like, he definitely got typecast, <laughs> right? 
Like everything he play in, like he's the same character all the time. <laughs> and oh, you want to know who else was in here? Oh, Pablo Schreiber. He oh. was in the wire. Met the man was in the wire. That's what I'm saying, man. Like the wire, I think that's why the wire is so. Uh, you want to know who else? Michael Hyatt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, I think that's what makes this show so monumental is the fact of like what these people became afterwards. Yeah, and time. not time. that the wire, no, look, I, listen. I was the same way. Yeah, I was the same way. I was, and that's what I'm saying. Like, HBO just had a knack for picking really, really good shows. Mm-hmm. And, um, and for Wood Harris to be able to be a part of it, like that, that really, I think, but the thing is, like, even the movies that he played in, like, you have to be, I mean, like, like not easily broken. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a film that, like, a lot of white people probably saw. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's, but it was still a really, really good black film about love. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, you want to know what movie I think that he did real, real good in? But I mean, like he wasn't in it a lot. But uh, Spencer Confidential. He was in it. Wasn't he, wasn't he a detective in that? Or am I thinking of somebody else? I think you might be thinking of someone else. I don't think he was in. It. I remember that movie. That's uh, that's Winston Duke and um, Mark and Mark, uh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who was I don't, the cop? I don't remember, but it wasn't him. I got his IMDb in front of me, and I don't, I don't see okay. Spencer Confidential. I might, be, I might be thinking of somebody else. Okay. But I will That's say, the man. I wanted to, man, listen, Wood Harris is to me is is like, um, oh my God, what is dude's name? Like he he and all the uh, he and Snowfall. Um, Deont Deontay Bonds is that his? DeAndre Bonds? DeAndre Bonds. Yeah, like him and DeAndre Bonds, bro. Like they be in everything, but you just they they be in so much stuff that it's like, yeah, he was in that. You're like, nah, he, he wasn't in that. But you expect him to be in that because that's like, you know, what I'm saying that's something that will fit him. Yeah. Nah, I see what you're saying. I definitely see what you're saying. But like I always tend to mention when we do these. Now, first of all, he was in one of the Ant Man movies. So mm-hmm. that's first and foremost. Now I don't remember what happened to his character in that movie, but I'm just saying once what the you get fuck into Marvel, Wood Harris doing Ant Man. That I don't remember. I do not remember him in Ant Man. I don't know. Um, but I remember Ti. Yeah, I remember Ti, and Ti had a big part in um yeah. in Ant Man, but he played he played uh, Gail. So I don't know if that's a character that could be reoccurring, but all I'm saying is once you in the Marvel Universe, you never know. You know what I'm saying? He could be brought back up at any time. You have no clue. Now, he wasn't in Ant-Man 2, but I'm just saying. But the point I bring this up is he has a series. We don't know how this is going to go, but he's Little Duke and Greed. Now, he had a bigger part in part two, you know what I'm saying, Creed 2. But what we do know is Creed is a spinoff of Rocky. That was like fucking seven Rocky movies. So Like five Creeds. That's what I'm saying. We don't know how long this is going to go. And now, the way it looks and the way that Creed 2 ended, he's going to be his trainer. So he can have a huge role. Yeah, and Creed three, if there is a Creed three coming, um, coming, you know, coming to us at some point, if we do get it, uh, I haven't seen anything on do, it. If they do, they got to do a scene where Michael B. Jordan is being worked on, and Will Harris has to scream, throw in the damn cow. <laughs> <laughs> they got to, bro. They got to. Oh man, you stupid. Um, <laughs> but. But to just to be for number one, to be in the Marvel Universe, you never know what could happen in the Marvel Universe. So that's right. always a positive sign. And then to be in a series 
that you know Sylvester Stallone started, which and and, and this is what we got to do, man. We got to give real quickly Sylvester Stallone his props, man. Like this is what a lot of people don't know about Sylvester Stallone. For number one, he wrote the Rocky movies. For number two, he was the one who wanted Carl Weathers, giving Carl Weathers the opportunity to become Apollo Creed and look how important the Creed name have became. He wanted you, Mr. You, T. You can't, yeah, so you can't really blame me, man. Carl Weathers and Mr. T was, was hot stuff at the time, bro. It, that, nigga, that nigga Carl Weathers was coming off of Action Jackson. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? But what I also think Sylvester Stallone, you know, I think the first Rocky came out in what I think seventy four, if I'm not mistaken. To to put Rocky, so I don't know. To put a black man in that light, you know what I'm saying? Like he did with Carl Weathers. Like I, I think that that was very huge thing to do. And I think that now, Carl Weathers, don't get me wrong. I think that he would have had a, a, a good career, but then, like, but do you think he would have got Predator if it wasn't for him playing Apollo Creed? You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Oh no, man. I feel like I feel like those man. Rocky movies kind of kind of shot him up, man. Nah, man. Carl Weathers was the man. Listen, Carl Weathers was the man, bro. Like. Regardless of regardless of him being in Rocky, I don't think Rocky hurt his career, but I don't think it it was the reason that he was getting those roles. Cause I mean, like you gotta think about it, like like you brought up Mr. T. Mr. T could have been in Predator. Yeah. Um, Mr. T could have played Action Jackson. Like the roles that they was playing, like he was one of those dudes that was you know what I'm saying an attractive dude at the time. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, like he was in shape, you know what I'm saying? He was in shape. Like he yep. was he was the perfect fit for the role. So you like you you know what I'm saying? Like if when you look at the movies that he played in, like he did, you know what I'm saying? He was a great actor. He wasn't a bad actor. And then like if you even if you watch like later on down the line to where, you know what I'm saying, he transitioned into, you know what I'm saying, like a, a less serious role. Like when he was in um uh uh um What's the Adam Sandler golf movie, man? Damn, I can't think of that. Oh, uh, oh my God. Oh, it's at the tip of my tongue. Um, shit. I know what you're talking about. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore, yeah. Damn it. Yeah, when he was, like, when, just him being in Happy Gilmore playing, you know what I'm saying, the less serious role, the comedic role. Like, you could, you know, he, he had the chops to do that type of stuff, man. And, and so, you know, so I think that he definitely would have, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, been who he was regardless. I, like I said, I don't think it, you know what I'm saying, it hurt him at all, of course, but I, I definitely think it helped, but I don't think that was, like, the main reason, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying, but I still think that, you know, Stephen Stallone could have got anybody, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, he, he also wrote a movie about a dude who loses, but somehow he's the winner all the time. Yeah, I mean, this is true. This so is I mean, true. Like at that point, anybody could have played the other role. It didn't even matter. He was gonna get his yeah. ass Yeah, but then at the same time, look at it this way, right? So Cree mm-hmm. two, Cree two. Yeah. He brought back Drago. You know what I'm saying? The Drago son, right? Yeah. Instead Shout of out doing to the Lundgren, Cree- man, that's what, that's oh, one yeah. of my favorite white actors, man. He man. Yeah, definitely. But what? I, but the point I'm making is he could have. He could have did. A spinoff on that. That was the side story in Creed 2. All I'm saying is like basically what I'm saying only, is it's only right only because of the, you know what I'm saying, just with just the 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 way that it, it played out. You know what I'm saying? Dolph Lundgren basically killed Creed in the first one. And then this is the one where, you know what I'm saying, the son gets the redemption. Like it it, it played out perfect. It did. It did. Um but the whole reason we even went down this whole spell is the fact of with Wood Harris being able to be in the Creed movies and have the character yeah. that he had being Little Duke when Duke was Apollo Creed's trainer right. and now 
he's about to be the trainer of, you know what I'm saying, Adonis Creed. You're right. I think Wood has a really, really good place. Now, with now Rocky ended up doing this shit forever. Like <laughs> Rocky reason yeah, Rocky sure. did that what the stupid ass Rocky Balboa movie when he was boxing at fucking sixty years old. So we don't know how far this damn Creed shit can go. So Hey man, let me tell you something. Rocky fought uh <laughs> who who was the uh who was the, the one dude that he fought? Um Tommy Guns. Nah, not Tommy Guns. That was a street fight. The uh the black dude, um Oh, I know you're talking about the dude that's a professional boxer. Um when he when he was the when he was sixty, when he fought that sixty year old fight. And they, yeah. they had him on fight night. <laughs> they had him on fight night on ESPN. Yeah. That shit was crazy. Hey bro. I was so weak when I see that shit. I'm like, why do they got Rocky Balboa on fight night, man? Let it go. Yo, that shit was hilarious, and it because oh, it was man. such a bad movie. Yes, it was. That movie was so bad. I was like, "Yo, they need to stop." I like they it, it did like you remember when he did Grudge Match. Yep. <laughs> Yo, they need Robbie to stop. D. Yo, they need to stop, man, for real. But um, but you know Professor what? I wouldn't. Wrong. I wouldn't mind seeing Wood Harrison like one of those action type movies that. You know what I'm saying? Like he can do, like not necessarily like a, uh, like where he doing like kung fu and shit like that. But like you know what I'm saying, one of them shootout type action movies. I wouldn't mind seeing uh-huh. him, seeing how he doing one of those. Well, I mean, if Will Harris gonna do it, well, this is the thing. You know, it's crazy how all the action stars are still in their fifties, <laughs> in sixties, and seventies, yeah. like. And yeah. Wood Harris is fifty two now, so he still can do it. He won't have to do too much, but you know what I'm saying. Shoot a couple pistols. Yeah, like he still. I mean, Denzel got a uh, Equalizer three coming out. Hey, man, listen. If Steven Seagal could constantly fake flip people on film, Wood Harris can, can punch a couple people and Yo, shoot a couple dude. Doors. Yo, you wow. Listen, hey, listen. It's a it's a video. It is a video. On YouTube, I want everybody that's listening to this. I want you to go watch this. There's a video on YouTube where Steven Seagal is doing. I think is is it's not is it Jeet Kundo? No, that's I YouTube. seen it. I, I know what you're talking about. I seen where it. he he just going through he going through the line and flipping everybody. Yeah, and it's it's clear that he's not flipping them for real. <laughs> like he grab he grabbed one he grabbed like the palm of one dude's hand and flipped. I'm like, bro, you there's no way you're doing that in real life. And this is at an actual martial arts exhibition. Hey, buddy, you stupid. <laughs> man, listen. Um, but one thing I want to mention, man, before before we get to this top three, man, is, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He's in BMF, too, <laughs> man. Um, you know, one of the 50 Cent shows, you know what I'm saying, about yeah, Big Meech. Yeah. Um, I think I, I think this, I think this, I think this next season, though, I think he's going to die, though. I think he'll get. I think he'll get killed off the show because if you watch it, you you can kind of tell this character is coming to an end at some point. Oh, okay. so um, so yeah, man, check him out on uh on BMF as well. I see they're filming it now, so uh, that should be coming back out soon, man. But um, but man, I'm gonna go ahead and and start with my top three first, man. Um, okay, okay. I'm struggling with one, but um. Obviously, for number one, man, um, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. Paid in full. Definitely gotta go. Paid okay. in full at one. Um, number two, man, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans is my shit. And this is where it gets hard for me because it's between Next Day Air and Above the Rim. I knew it. I knew it. <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go above the rim. It's just one of those movies that I've just watched a lot. It's just one of those movies that, you know, what I'm saying that I don't know, man. I I just really fuck with it. So, so those are the three I'm gonna have to go. But man, next day air is a close, very close. It's like a, it's three and a half, man. It's three and a half, like it's right there. But those are my top three 
Wood Harris movies, man. Well, don't you worry, man, because I'm going to pick up the slack for you, you feel me? So, my <laughs> first one, of course, is paid in full. I mean, that's, like I said, that's the one that, to me, set him off. That's the one that set him apart. Um, that's the one that kind of pushed him out into the forefront. Um, my second one is Next Day Air. You know what I mean? To me, that's that's one of those movies that didn't get the credit it truly deserved. Um, we, we went off on, you know what I'm saying, the cast already. You know what I'm saying? We let you know who was in it. And to me, that's one of those things that, I mean, that's one of those movies that when you see it, it's it's a lot better than the than what they advertise. You know what I mean? Um, and then my third one, man, of course, is Remember the Titans. You know, you, like I said, left side, strong side, man. When he, you know, when he cried and he promised that championship when he was in the hospital room. Come on, man. Yeah, when Gary got paralyzed. Yeah, man. You know, you you had to you had to feel that in your bones, bro. You know what I'm saying? They went out there and gave it everything they got. And don't forget, you know what I'm saying? Um, this was you know what I'm saying another movie he did with Donald Faison. Yep, that's what I said. Like I say, team back up with Petey. Yeah, man. Yep, he did another movie uh, with Donald Faison, and then, um, you know, you know. It was just a it's such a good movie, bro. Like like I said, you you forget that so many people are in that movie. Well, it's it's really Denzel's fault, but you forget that so many people are in that movie though. You yeah. know what I mean? And and really a lot of people from that movie end up going off to do, you know, things amazing things as well too. Yep. You are completely right. Completely right. But man, shout out shout out to Wood, man. He's had a very very successful career um i just think that it depends on what type of roads you travel man of how you review a guy like wood um Mm -hmm. so to 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 some of our listeners they're gonna totally get it there's gonna be some gonna be like yeah i don't know why y'all doing this dude who the hell is wood here (laughs) yeah So, uh, but when you tell them that he's julius and and remember the titans oh yeah that dude but um, sure. yeah, man. So uh, coming soon, man. Um, we had to do. We had to call an audible, man. We had to call an audible because you. Mm-hmm. I seen it last week. You know what I'm saying? You started watching it this week, and you was like, "Yo, about this joint." Yeah, I had to. I had to get in it. When I seen when you told me about it, I had put it on my list. But you know how Netflix, man, they play the you know what I'm saying the, the trailer or they play like a piece of the movie in the background. And then when I read the description of what it was about, I was like, oh, this is right up my alley. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. And we're talking about the uh, Chris Hemsworth new film, you know what I'm saying, with, with the, with the, with the mm-hmm. dude, uh, Miles Tiller, Spiderhead, yeah. man. And don't, new- forget, don't forget the beautiful, gorgeous Journey Smollett. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, she's, uh, she's in it as well, man. She has a, a mm-hmm. very key role. In this movie, yeah, but uh, yeah. it's definitely gonna be fun to break it. Like you said, this is definitely something right up your alley, man. You know what I'm saying? When it yeah. comes to this, you know, I guess you can call it science fiction, in a way. Well, no, it's it's not really science fiction. It's more like um, this is no thriller, in a way. Yeah, but they using like this, you know, these chemicals to try to get the certain reaction out of you. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, I guess he's a sci-fi thriller. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sense. Like, but yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna be fun to do it, man. Like I said, uh, you know, Chris Hemsworth, that dude is busy. Nah, he is, what, he, what, what? Yo, he, no, Chris Hemsworth is killing this role, bro. I gotta give him credit, bro. Oh yeah, but we'll 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 definitely we'll give it we'll give him his flowers next week. We'll give him his flowers yeah, next week. But, sure. But yeah, yeah sure. he's 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 putting a lot of work in. Y'all, a lot of work. Yeah. He, he got a whole yeah. movie about to come out, what, next month? Um, in the yeah. Thor joint? Thor Love and Thunder, man. Yeah, man. So this dude is killing it, man. So shout out to him. But yeah. um, it, Actually, he got he got two coming out. He got Thor Love and Thunder, and then he got the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Volume 3. <sighs> hey, so Chris, he, if you're listening. Definitely working. You know what I'm saying? If you're listening, you know what I'm saying? You know, you let me hold something. It ain't gotta be a lot. 
<laughs> but me too. You know what I'm saying? Let me hold something, man. You can't. You're small you can't. Five hundred dollars will go a long way, brother. <laughs> you can't. You can't spend it all, man. You can't spend it all, man. <laughs> man. I'm with you yeah, on that man. one, bro. I'm with you on that one, man. So yes, listen, sir. guys. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, you know what I'm saying? Stay tuned, man. Um, thank you guys for listening and tuning in. As always, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's greatly appreciated. Um, if you like the episode, didn't like the episode, or you just want to, you know what I'm saying, banner back and forth about, you know what I'm saying, uh, some stuff you want to hear or something that you think we should cover, definitely hit us up on our socials, on IG and Twitter, at U and I'm Pod, and then you can hit us up on Facebook at VA Pod Watch Group. You can also follow me at Scoop Bronson on Twitter. I have a uh, link tree link in there. That's where you can find me everywhere else. Yes, sir. Y'all can find me at uh, s.foster8. That's on Instagram and Twitter at 28 Minutes or Less Pod. That is just on IG. Um, check out the podcast. Uh, the episode, I think it was 90. Uh, I spoke about it the last episode. I did uh, Boys Don't Cry, you know what I'm saying, starring mm-hmm. Hillary Swain, about the uh, Brandon Tina story. So check that out on all major platforms. And uh, that's all I got this week. That's what's up, man. So um, make sure you guys go follow through with all that, man. And uh, until the next episode, we will catch you then. Um, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Listen, thanks, you know what I'm saying, as always. And like they say in Hollywood, that's a wrap. Cut. <laughs>